Well, that thing right there is a permanent magnet brushless motor that we just built out of a car alternator. Now if you have been through our previous project video, we did build a wind turbine using a truck alternator completely out of scratch. Even though we have used a 24 volt alternator, but that thing needed way more speed than what we have anticipated earlier. Besides that, we have to energize the router in order to magnetize it, which in case of wind turbine is a complete waste of power. So in this video, we are going to convert a car alternator into a permanent magnet one to see if it's worth repurposing it as a generator or who knows we might end up converting it into a powerful brushless motor. We have different opinions on that so we are expecting different results. But before we jump into the build and find out, it's time to settle those differences right now. Here I would love to thank GLC PCB for making this project video possible. They are one of the largest PCB manufacturers around the globe, providing finest quality services right at your doorstep. We have partnered with GLC PCB for the last three years and not a single glitch in their services, whether it's customized printed circuit boards for our project or their assembly. So don't forget to visit GLC PCB to get great deals on your order. The link is in the description below. For this conversion, we are going to use a 12 volt car alternator. These alternator converts the mechanical energy of an internal combustion engine to top up the battery as it powers the onboard 12 volt accessories. The fact that they are attached to a fuel sucker makes the design of these alternators justified. Inefficient yet robust. I mean who cares about the efficiency when you have plenty of power to lose. Most of these alternators have thick stator laminations like this one resulting in excessive eddy currents that are induced into the stator causing less efficiency. Well, we can't change anything about the stator right now as the whole thing is based around the stator. So the only thing that we are going to change right now is the router and the things related to that like the carbon brushes and the voltage regulator unit right on top of the router assembly. Now you might be thinking that why they have used three inefficient components if they can generate more power just by using a permanent magnet router. Well, the limitation here is the engine speed. We cannot control it, yet we need to produce a fixed output voltage, otherwise we'll end up blowing everything. Now that's achieved using an onboard regulator that decreases the voltage applied across the router coil through a pair of carbon brushes as the engine speeds up. Another reason for doing that is the fact that these permanent magnets will lose their strength under the temperatures these alternator usually operates, making them expensive and less reliable which surely car companies do not want. But the good news is that we are getting rid of all that stuff as we no longer are under the hood. As everything is apart, we took the dimensions like the router diameter and the height of the stator coils in order to determine the size of the magnets that we are going to need. Thankfully, the new diameter magnets that we needed were exactly the same size that's used in a brushless hub motor from a hoverboard. We have got quite a bunch of them laying around, so we poured one of the hubs with thinner to let the glue soften. This will later help us to salvage the magnets quite easily. Once we finalize the router design, we outsource the whole machining process and here it is, a job well done. Well, we have got a 17mm shaft to which the faceplate and the drum is welded. We have got 3mm collars on either end of the drum that will later help us to align the magnets vertically on the drum. To further cut down weight, we drilled 6 holes on the router faceplate that will allow the air to flow across making everything cooler. Later we salvaged the magnets from the hub and we needed 24 of them.
Now if you have noticed the stock router have 12 alternating poles. We are going to do the same with these magnets but in pairs so that we will cover the maximum available area on the router drum. We started gluing the magnets by spacing them using our 3D printed spacers making sure we place them with alternating poles. Later we glued the remaining magnets so that we have same poles on a pair and the next pair of magnets alternates. So guys we did manage to get all the magnets in place on the router but before we spin it inside the alternator what we are going to do is to secure all these magnets so that they won't fly off at 4000 rpms and uh, for that we are going to use a thread to get over on top of these magnets and uh, we are going to do all that stuff on our DIY lathe project so stay tuned for that project as well. Anyways, we applied two layers of thread that's later strengthened by super glue. Well, the right ingredient here would have been carbon fiber, but for the time being, we are unable to get that, so fingers crossed. Once we are done with that, it was time to assemble everything together. Now these new dummy magnets are super strong so we had to be really careful working with them. Once the router is in place, we then tightened all the bolts. Now before we head to the test bench, we soldered all the wires directly to the winding, eliminating the onboard rectify unit as we don't need it right now. The alternator now weighs at 3 kg so we trimmed down nearly 2 kg weight. Now that's great considering the fact that from now on we don't have to deal with any inefficient parts. To test the amount of power this alternator can generate, we mounted it to the vise. Spinning the router by bare hand is almost useless as this permanent magnet router has lots of cogging and we are barely able to spin the shaft and thus there is no visible output on this 12 volt bulb. So we used our impact wrench and it took us around 1200 rpms to light up a 12 volt bulb. Now is it good enough? Well not yet. Usually wind turbines spin at 700 rpm and even if we are going to use a step up gearing, I doubt it will spin the router fast enough to produce reasonable amount of power. This might be resolved by using a 24 volt alternator and somehow decreasing the cocking effect but that's a subject for another project video. Now if this alternator needs to spin that fast just to produce 12 volt, imagine what it's going to do if we are going to run this thing on 42 volts. Well, that's exactly what we are going to do next. No problem, if it's not going to be a good generator at slow speed, it can definitely be a powerful brushless motor. So the prop that you see right there is a 24 inch prop that has 12 inch pitch. For comparison, it's usually driven by a 2-stroke 60cc RC airplane engines. So we spun the motor using a 10 cell lithium ion battery pack that's nearly 42 volt so we were expecting around 4400 rpms but to our surprise we are able to achieve only 3300 rpm. The router is drawing 350 watts of power without any load and this clearly indicates that there is something wrong in there. Well, that's a lot of power running the alternator without any load as the same setup with the propeller mounted just added 600 watts of power drawing a total of nearly 1000 watts. The good thing is that the prop the good thing is that the alternator achieved almost the same speed with the prop as it did without any load. Compared to the gasoline engine, this thing offered instant power which is a great feature of electric system. Well, it's our first time converting a car alternator into something that's more useful for us. So I guess we should call it success. We'll try to find out the reason why it's drawing so much power without any load as everything is running smoothly without any excessive vibration. So this might be the issue that's related to the width of the magnetic poles on the router. 
Now we are curious to see if this car alternator after conversion can be a powerful brushless motor but for that we are going to convert our bike into an electric one and for that project video stay tuned as we are going to see you soon next week.